In this video, we're going to learn why we should never use the getS function in C and why we should use the fgetS function instead. So the getS function is something you might see in examples online or in textbooks. The function can be used to accept string input from standard input, which by default is going to be the terminal or what we call the shell. The problem with getS is that it's unsafe and error prone. Let's go over an example as to why. We'll make a character array called buffer that can store up to five characters. Then we'll prompt the user to enter a string. We'll say printf enter. Then we'll use get s to store the string that's entered using standard input into the buffer array. So we'll say get s buffer. Then we'll print out the string. We'll say printf string percent s backslash n and we'll output the buffer. So we'll save this, we'll compile our program, and we'll give it a try. And already we're getting a warning here. It says this program uses get s, which is unsafe. It's very rare to see a warning for a function so important that it's actually put into the running program itself. That gives us an indication as to how bad get s is. So here we'll put in abc, and we get back the string abc. So it seems to be working okay. What getS is going to do is read characters from standard input until either a new line or end of file is encountered. And it's going to store those characters into this character array provided here as an argument. So in memory, we have the character array buffer. And there are indexes in that character array. And we have five indexes, 0, 1, 2, 3, and four. And after entering in the string ABC, the buffer will have A, B, and C in the first three indexes. And then the special null terminator character that signifies the end of a string will be in that fourth index, index three, because indexes start off with zero. Let's try to enter a string that's larger than four characters now. So we'll run our program again, and we'll enter in the string a, B, C, D, E, F, and hit enter. We still get string A, B, C, D, E, F, but our buffer only has five indexes. It only is able to store five characters. So what happens is A, B, C, and then D, E, F, followed by the null terminator are still gonna be stored in memory. The problem is these last two characters are being written to places in memory where they really shouldn't be. So when the buffer character array is created, it's given positions in memory to store five characters. And if we keep on writing to the buffer past this last index here, we're gonna be writing into places in memory that have not been set aside for the buffer. Those places in memory may have been set aside for other things like other variables or other arrays in our program. That's a problem because now we're corrupting memory, we're modifying memory that we really shouldn't be modifying. This can even be a security risk as well. If the string entered is only a couple characters beyond the size of the buffer, we may not notice the issue, but if we enter in a very, very large string, it'll likely cause an error. So let's we'll put in a very, very long string and hit enter. And now we get segmentation fault which is a type of error that can occur when our program tries to access memory that it really shouldn't. Let's do something else. Let's dynamically allocate two character arrays on the heap using malloc. So we'll say here car star buffer is equal to malloc and we'll say size of car times five. And then we'll say car star next is equal to malloc size of car times five. So now we've dynamically allocated space for two character arrays on the heap, both of size five. Because we're using the function malloc to dynamically allocate space on the heap, we're going to include stdlib.h because that's a library where that function is defined. Now, because we're using dynamically allocated memory, we're also gonna use free. We're gonna say free buffer, and free next as well, just to free the space on the heap once we're done working with it. 
Now, when we dynamically allocate space like this on the heap, there's no guarantee that the blocks of memory that are allocated are actually going to be next to each other. So we can't count on this. But in this case here, with a small program that just dynamically allocates two things, at least on my system, they'll likely be next to each other. So what's gonna happen is, in memory, we're gonna have buffer, and then someplace after buffer, we're going to have next. So if we were to keep going beyond the buffer array in memory, we would eventually run into our next array in memory. What we'll do is print out next. We'll say printf next percent s backslash n and then next. So right now our program is just using get s to store a string into buffer. But let's see what happens if we enter in a long string into buffer. So we'll save our program. We'll compile it. And then we'll run it. And we'll type in a long string. We'll say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And then we'll put in the numbers too. So we'll put in the numbers from zero to nine here too. And then I'll hit enter. So the string looks like this. But then look at this. Next, the string that we output here apparently contains the characters that we used get s to store into buffer. So what's going to happen is that get s is going to write the characters that we entered into the terminal into the buffer array in memory. So it's going to write in the characters a, b, c, and so on. But it'll very quickly run past the end of the buffer and continue to write characters in memory. Eventually, though, our next array is found in memory. It's going to continue to write characters into the next array indexes in memory. So that's the issue with get s. It's going to write data into memory that it shouldn't even really be accessing. We call this situation a buffer overflow. So that's why we should never use get s in our C programs. Instead, we should use f get s. And f get s looks like this. We'll say f get s buffer comma five and then comma stdin. So f gets can be used to read data from files. But if we put stdin here, we're going to read data from standard input, which by default is the shell. Now, the second argument here is pretty important. That's going to limit the number of characters that are read from standard input and stored into the buffer. It's going to limit the number of characters to four because that special null terminator character also has to be put onto the end of buffer. Let's give this one a try. We'll save this. We'll compile our program. And then we'll run it. And we'll enter in A, B, C, D, E, F. Now the string only contains A, B, C, D. And there's no overflow into next. So this makes F gets much safer than get s because if we just give the size of the buffer here in terms of the number of characters it can store f gets is not going to overflow that buffer it'll store in a b c d followed by the null terminator and we're good now this should make us wonder what happens to ef here where do they go they're actually going to stay on the standard input stream and we can read those characters off the standard input stream with a future function call. So for example, we could call f gets again. We'll say f gets next five and then stdin. And we'll save this. We'll compile our program and then we'll run it. And we'll put in abc def. And what happens here is that again, A, B, C, D are stored into the buffer car array. But now on the standard input stream, there's still the characters E, F, followed by a new line character after hitting enter. So for this next F gets function call here, there isn't even any pause for input from the user because there's already characters on the standard input stream already. Those characters are read off the standard input stream, we get E, F, 
and then the new line character after hitting enter, those characters are stored into the next character array. So we can use that second argument of fgets to prevent buffer overflow from occurring and more safely process input from standard input. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.